Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Curious John episode 70. That's going to be my best guess at the moment. Uh, welcome to another episode. So one of the things I've talked about nearly every week. God, it's not 70. I just looked it up at 65. Ah, oh, so close. Back to my point. So one of the one of the benefits of recording a podcast somewhat every week is the idea that because you do so, you can pick up things that you normally wouldn't. What do I mean by that? Well, if you care about quality of your product and you go basically back and listen to it, which I do probably too often because I edit it, that's me multiple listens probably, and then I go and listen to it post-release to make sure everything's on the up and up. One of the things that you'll notice of yourself is your idioms, right? When you say um, when you say and, or you say apparently, if you know, you know. Those are things you pick up on when you're listening to yourself. In a way, this is a great way of getting rid of some of those ticks, those little those little speech ticks that you have, those little quirks that you pick up when you're trying to fill space and voids in between conversation. The, those are the blanks in be, in your brain when your brain is trying to go to the next word and it can't. And so it fills in something because, I don't know, etiquette or something that we fill in words. So a lot of people have a lot of them and I have them for sure. Um, the single word ones are probably the hardest to get rid of because you almost have to slow down your peach, your speech. You have to also think through what you're saying and you have to be also very willing to just have a very brief pause. In today's day and age, that's probably a little bit more difficult because people love shorthanded conversations, quick things, videos, information, data, whatever. They want it very relatively quickly and getting rid of those idioms is going to be hard. With that said, apart from idioms, you'll likely have things that you say often. And for me, for me, I've noticed that I do a lot of this like, oh, I'm going to, I haven't posted in a while, right? I bring that up a lot, which I told myself I'm going to stop doing, which this is not, this doesn't count. No, this doesn't, no, no, this does not count. This does not count. This is just me making a point. But, in listening to last week's podcast, the other thing I do a lot, which is annoying when, when you catch these idioms, is I often talk about, this is going to be a short podcast, and then I proceed to have a 20, 30-minute podcast. That needs to go away. So that's one of the benefits of having a podcast. If you ever decide to do something like this and listening to yourself for many, many, many hours is a great way for you to improve your public speaking, if you will. This will be a great way for you to get rid of some of these idioms if you truly choose to analyze things. And that was kind of the point of last week's podcast. Check out this great transition. And further so will be the point of this week's podcast. In last week's podcast, we talked about pattern recognition in life. Looking at scenarios that you find yourself in often or scenarios that you find yourself in, period, that allow you to make philosophical connections with your life or lessons you're not learning. We talk a lot about projection in this podcast where you will find somebody or maybe yourself who does things, but those are really a projection of what you're trying to get out or a projection of what you're thinking of. Or if you're that person that's like, oh, Nancy's very negative. But in a sense, you might be projecting the fact that you're really negative and Nancy's just a vessel to project that saying moving forward and you're not catching yourself so in catching these things you can sometimes make connections and course correct and in my life a lot of education a lot of growth has come from the idea that i can sit in with ideas and thoughts in my head and apply those towards something sit down and analyze scenarios life choices and find out you know why things happen why i did things and why i choose to do things and sometimes probably most times that's the only time you make true change because we're creatures of habit as am i i love my habits i love my routine because it helps me get far more done than what would normally be achievable 
But in routine, you also maintain shitty routines and shitty choices and bad decision making. Which is the same as bad choices, by the way, I'm just saying. But ultimately, you need to be able to sit down and have the time to think through your choices, really truly analyze them from a very honest standpoint. And as I get older, I start to realize that people have a very hard time being honest with yourselves, which is a whole podcast in and of itself, which we'll one day talk about. I don't have a fix for it, but it's just something I've noticed. So in keeping with that topic, we're going to kind of further kind of show you a little bit how my brain works and tell you a little bit about um, some connection I made based on some trivial, incredibly trivial, by the way, Instagram video. So in one of the reels I, I was given or came up on my feed or whatnot was this very cool little visual kind of marble thing. So let me give you a little visual because this is a non-visual medium and I need to paint a picture, if you will. If you follow me on social media, Life Generalist, I will do you the favor of posting this video every day. So if you click on my stories, you'll know which reel um, pertains to this podcast. You'll just have to click on my stories. But this reel is kind of cool. So what it is, is a think of like a long runner of a long piece of wood, right? With a curvy, wavy recess in it allowing basically for marbles to roll into this wavy thing, right? The piece of wood is in an angle, which basically means that the, the marbles are going to roll down. That's basically what this is saying. So just picture basically like a channel in which marbles are rolling down. If you want to get into semantics, the channel is kind of wavy to allow them to kind of maintain momentum and keep momentum and move and whatever, whatever. Anyways, downhill slope, it's all going to happen anyways. So, it's very fascinating because the video is basically this person and they're loading, they're loading this, this thing full of marbles and they have a brick at the end, which doesn't allow them to go forward, right? They're stopped there. So they're fully loaded. And then basically, as you see, somebody eventually pulls a little brick and the marbles start running down the, the channel. And then they go into this little swirly thing that is swirling the marbles. And eventually they go down a hole. If you're incredibly old, like myself, You'll likely remember these from when you used to go to the mall. You know, this younger generation probably doesn't go to the mall as much from what I gather. But the mall used to have those cool little circular turbine, almost like a, like a black hole looking thing where you used to put a quarter and you used to let it go. And it used to go down this little ramp and the quarter would go down over and over and over and over in that little kind of tunnel, tunnel kind of thing. I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure there's a physics word for this that I'm, that's not coming to mind. But it basically spins, 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 and then it gets to the center of the hole where it progresses to like increase its energy because it's a tighter circle. So you see it and it eventually falls into the hole. It's a similar thing with these marbles. So what ends up happening is a person pulls a brick and as the marbles run, they eventually go around and round and round into this thing till they all fall through the hole, right? And it's cool. It's a very cool visual aspect. It's a very cool like visual thing that you can kind of just stare at for a while. It's, it's like death scrolling. It's kind of visually beautiful and, and entertaining for who knows why. Well, I don't understand why this is visually entertaining, but it is. I'm staring at it right now. And it's kind of like, ooh, look at the colors. But... This is how my brain works. I'll show you how what, what kind of weird ass connection my brain made here. So in watching this, to me, to me, this video was an odd analogy for life. Right? Life is almost like the progression of these, like the, the, the colors and shifting of the way they roll down this little turbine looking thing. What what this the connection I made to this was very fascinating because it's the marbles are all very different colors. So you go from like a brown to like a off brown to like a blue, and then eventually they get to a green. And when they're going in this little circle, right, it's so pretty. And it's like the, the colors get a little darker. They change a little bit. And you see the marbles start mixing, and they, the colors vary, and, and it goes up and down, right? And it's very fascinating because this is what my brain thought of when I gave myself time to think about this. In many respects, this turbine... It, it's kind of like life. You're sometimes like you, things just come at you. Things are going to be given to you no matter whether you want them or not, whether they're good cards or whether they're bad cards. That's kind of what it is. 
But the, the connection I made here was keep in mind that sometimes you have to get through the brown marbles in order to get to the green marbles. You take that for whatever that means or vice versa, right? You need to get through certain colors in order to get to the, uh, the, the better colors that you like, that you want to be in. And that's kind of one, one thing because people focus so much on the negative things that they've got going on in life. And in many respects, you should because those are teaching opportunities. But realize that those negative moments are not and, uh, and probably shouldn't be the thing that crumbles you. They're, they're oftentimes lessons. Now, if you're dealing with something life-threatening, that's a totally different thing. I'm talking about the simple stuff like the, oh, my car broke down, or hey, I, I, somebody pissed me off at work, or hey, this person called me ugly, or so, whatever. Fill in the blank on the stupid thing that probably pissed you off today, right? Those little things are just often lessons, and you got to just get through them and the next color of marble will come through and you'll be in a better spot. But the secondary thing to, that I took away from this is realize that this is, in this analogy, in this video, this is a man-made device, right? I'm not telling you, I'm not going hippy-dippy here and telling you that life is a man-made device. That's not for me to freaking talk about. I'm not one of these conspiracy theory people. But this is, this marble mechanism is a human device. And... A human implemented these marbles at a specific color frequency, at a specific order, so that they would have this effect, right, when they rolled all the way down and, and spun with each other. A human made that. And to me, the, a little bit of this is human intervention. So if you're trying to find, what I mean by all of this is saying that if you're trying to be a person that's going from a bad marble color to a good marble color in life, that marble color doesn't shift on its own. That marble doesn't convert into the next color on its own. It's not that single marble that changes. It is the next marble in the line that moves you along. And that right there was a human mechanism. And in many respects, that's a, like a philosophical point to make here, is the idea that if you want change, if you want to progress in whatever it is, whether let's be, let's take my, my simple analogy for everything. If you want to improve your physical fitness, right? It only happens when you prompt that change. You have to load the proper marbles into that so that at the end, your little spiral thing comes out the way you want it. You have to make those active changes and make those decisions so they go your way. That is your piece you can control. You have choice. And those are the things you can do to get where you want to get. Now, if you choose to let life just kind of go, your marbles might not come out the way you want it to. The colors might not be what you want them to be. The order might not be what you want them to be. So make some choices towards what you want in life. And that's a podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That's how I can make a 10-minute podcast over, or probably more than at this point, for from just a very simple Instagram video because I guess I've just trained my brain to look at things the way I do. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But my point is, this is today's Food for Thought. This is today's lesson, or this week's, if you will. Um, I hope this was useful. I still urge you to play a little bit of this game in your life if you're not doing so already. Think through things. Spend a little time. Allow yourself that to think through your decisions, your choices, the patterns you find yourself in because that's the only way change happens is when you actively choose to make and, and make change and actually give yourself the motivation too to continue to make that change because that doesn't happen on its own either. But that happens through analyzing things and, and looking at things from a different lens. But that's it. That's this week's podcast. I'm going to try to edit this up quickly so I can have it ready for Monday. If Once again, if you guys enjoy this kind of thing, if you think somebody would benefit from this, if you have somebody that maybe would enjoy something like this, share it. That's all I'm asking for. I am Life Generalist. And this has been Curious John, episode 65.